Bonjour, ça va? C'est moi, Jack, et je suis ici uh, pour la... It's the social let's play, whatever let's play is in French. We're back, it's episode three. How are you doing? That was a French intro. I promise never to do that again. But yes, we are back here once more. We've been in France, you know, three months in game. I thought it's time to give the intro a go in French. Who knows, by the end of the series, we might be speaking fluent French at this rate. I highly doubt it, though. Uh, but no, we are here. Today we're going to be taking on Uxair, and there's not been that many games since you were last here, but I do want to just start off by saying a massive thank you to you guys for your support initially on this series. I'm recording this episode uh, the day that the first episode's gone out, and you guys have been fantastic about it. I've had a load of help from French viewers as well with pronunciation, so hopefully, I mean, it is still hopefully, I can now pronounce a few names just that little bit better. Of course, last time I left you guys, the transfer window was still open, and we jumped headfirst into it. Yes, we made a sale and some signings. And the sale was really motivated by the fact that I needed to get some money freed up to bring in the players I wanted to bring in. And the player in question leaving us is Darren Kinsley Gier Cosambia. I'll be honest, it's not a name that rolls off the tongue. Maybe that played a role in the sale of him. But he has gone to Bordeaux, this guy. He's an okay youth prospect. He was kind of quite hotly tipped in our youth team. Um, you can see here he has issues with his consistency. But the main motivation behind selling him, honestly, was just his physicals are absolutely awful. He has good stamina and he has good natural fitness. But besides that... Just nothing really standing out about him. And whilst I know he's 16 and he has only just turned 16, I feel like it's going to take a monumental turnaround to get him into the kind of player I'd want him to be. And as I said, I need him when he's freed up to sign the players that I've brought in. We've sold him for £300,000, but there is a 40% profit sell-on clause in that. So if he does develop into a world beater, we are going to get a slice of the pie. So it kind of makes sense as a sell, in my opinion. Anyway, the two players we brought in, the first one, Francisco Trincao, he joins us from Braga, £100,000 for this 17-year-old, that is a bargain, an absolutely ridiculous steal, such a good player this guy, he's only 17 as I already said, Portuguese player Trincao, and I'm really excited to see what he can do here, you can see he's already played three times for us in the league, a 7.41 average rating, I mean, he's looking like an absolute steal already, very young into his social career. Anyway, the other player we brought in, a player from Morton. Yes, a Scottish player. I, I know, I don't think I've ever signed a player from Morton in a YouTube save. I, I don't really go for Scottish players in general, but we've got one here. Jay Quintongo joins us, 19 years old, £300,000 paid. A player with a ton of potential. I'm excited to see how he gets on. He has already scored two league goals for us. He does have a few gaps in, in his game. The first touch could be better. Composure could be better. And I'd quite like to get his stamina up a little bit. But, generally speaking, he looks like a really exciting prospect. And I feel like at £300,000 for him... He's going to be a steal. You can see, looking at his report, great pace, his work rate's good. There is a kind of League One kind of quality player apparently in here. Don't necessarily agree with that from my assistant, but nevertheless, I think he's going to be a great player for us. So I'm excited to see how he gets on. And uh, yeah, as you can see, both these signings that we've brought in have started with a bang. And well, let's talk about the games that they made a splash in. We have played four games since that last episode, as you can see here. We'll start off with a game against Ajaxiao, uh, and we won this game 1-0. A good little result you can see here, Thomas Robinet with the goal. It came in the first 10 minutes. It was actually a really kind of close game in the end. Man of the match performance to Aktas once more. He has turned in to an absolute star, this guy. 18 years old, just a fantastic little playmaker. And he's improved a lot already, and I'm so excited to see him continue to improve at the club. He's got three years left on his contract, and uh, yeah, he, he's a player who I definitely feel like we can build around. Anyway, the next team that we took on, if we look here, was Runes, and uh, we lost to them 1-0, which was really disappointing. They scored just towards the end of the first half. Again, Actas with the Man of the Match performance. Give that man a coconut. Um, if we look at him here, you can see he's got two Player of the Matches now. He's been great. Four assists, three goals. And, um, yeah, 7.7 .7 average rating for him in this game. Anyway, the next game that we had was against this club, and uh, it was against Le Havre. Uh, that might be wrong pronunciation-wise. I will say, I said thank you for the help. I had someone tweet me, and I've not got your name to hand, so I apologise, but they gave me a write-out of every single player in my team who I might need to say frequently and how to say their name, and also all the teams in the division. So if it sounds like I'm reading off a list as I find these names... I might be, but massive thank you. I, I, you know, that kind of effort I really do appreciate. But anyway, we won this game, and Avra uh, were top of the league at the time. So it, it was it was a great result. You know, you really can't complain about that one little bit. In the end, we won 4-2. 
uh, and I'm a very, very happy bunny with this result. It was a midweek game, players a little bit tired going into this, but um, yeah, I, I really can't fault the overall effort of the team. You can see here as well, Andrea Sima. He grabbed a hat-trick, a player who I've criticised. He's only scored three goals all season, but they all came in this game. And, well, hopefully that's his shooting boots now found and he's going to continue to bang in goals for us. Anyway, as I mentioned, we played, uh, as you can see here, another Ajax Seattle side. Uh, there's a few of them floating around, apparently. But we beat them 2-0 at home, so another good performance there. Looking at this result, you can see Quintongo with a goal. Obviously, fantastic for him. And Trinquao getting a goal as well, of course. The Portuguese youngster got man of the match in this game. Got the assist, of course, on the first goal. And, uh, yeah, nice to keep a clean sheet. So, anyway, league form's not been too bad there. You know, three wins... Uh, out of four, not too shabby at all. Looking at the Ligue 2 table, you can see we're currently in fifth. Today we are going to be taking on Auxerre, who are one point behind us. So this is the kind of game that if we win, you know, suddenly we look like playoff contenders, I feel like. If we lose, it could be problematic. We are already a little bit off the pace of Havre at the top and Runes, but we'll, we'll try and catch up with them as best as we can. We'll see how we get on, of course, over the course of this season. I will reiterate what I said at the start of the year, which is, I will go for the playoffs if we're in the playoffs, but, you know, I, I, it's not a life or death thing right now. I really want to use this season as a season to grow. And, well, looking at the team here, grow it certainly has. We've made a few changes here and there, a few players uh, who I've been rotating around trying to kind of, you know, find the top performers. Jibo has definitely been kind of one of the big players for us. He's kind of been a mainstay of the defence. You can see defensively, um, we've been rotating a lot, but Jibo here, um, he's been a good player for us. Great determination. He chipped in with a goal one game. A 7.05 average rating isn't the best. I do feel like defensively, that's actually where we've been at our weakest so far this year, but... Obviously, hopefully, we can step things up. You can see here, Adolf has also kind of brought, been brought into the first team for this game. He got an 8.0 average rating in the one game he played in the Cup. Today, we're going to give him his league debut. He's a player who you might be wondering, Jack, why would you not play this guy more? Honestly, it primarily comes down to the fact that I'm probably going to look to move him on at the end of the year. And we have got some very talented young centre-backs. You know, the likes of Jean Ruiz here. Uh, we've also got this uh, this guy, Senhaji, uh, who is now playing for the Algeria under-21 side, who looks pretty good. And I want to give these players chances. And you can see I have been giving a few of them chances in these games. And well, we've also got, as you can see here, um, Florent Augier, uh, who's been playing okay when we've played him. His average range a little bit so-so, perhaps. But... Um, yeah, hopefully he can pick things up, obviously, alongside the rest of these players. So in terms of the team going into today's game, I'm kind of thinking we might just play the young boys. We might just play a really young lineup and see how they get on. Honestly, I'm not super attached to my starting eleven right now. You can see looking across the team, similarly to how it was previously, really, I've been rotating the team exactly how I please, and I feel like today against Uxair, it's not going to change one little bit. In terms of team dynamics, not that a whole lot's happened. Obviously, social groups here, you can see a few players missing from them. I mentioned about Quintongo signing. It is worth mentioning that he does have Portuguese secondary nationality. So he does speak good Portuguese, which might help him bond, you know, with the likes of Trincao, who, again, another Portuguese youngster we brought in. And, of course, the likes of Pana and also Rafael Martino, who, of course, is Brazilian. And uh, it's kind of weird, actually, how this kind of Portuguese core of the squad's kind of just emerged. It feels like there's some very good Portuguese. Portuguese players on offer for us to sign in Ligue 2 here. But anyway, let's get into today's game. We are going to be taking on Auxerre. I'm hoping for a good performance. And uh, yeah, let's see how we get on. We are away from home today, but I want to play on the front foot. I want to play attacking football. And I think we're going to go with the young lineup. So it's going to be Privo in goal. The 20 year old goalkeeper has been developing quite nicely. I'm a little bit dubious still over his aerial reach, but he's been pretty solid all in all. Across the back, we're going to go with Fuchs at right back. At left back, we're going to go with Pendant. Uh, he's been doing okay, actually. You can see he's been improving a little bit as well, which is always good to see. In the center of the defense, we're going to go with Adolf. And alongside him, we're going to go with Jabot. Ahead of them, we go with Tadio, uh, who's been a good player for us so far. 25 years old, obviously. One of the only leaders in the dressing room. Um, he's been okay. His average ratings could be a little bit better, but I don't feel like he's been at that fault for that many of the goals that we've been conceding. Anyway, Pan are going to play alongside him as the Mazala. Very good player, of course, the Angolan international. Out on the right, we're going to go with Quintongo making his live commentary debut. Trincao out on the left making his live commentary debut. Down the centre, we go with Actas, who, well, with the addition of Quintongo at right mid, now gets to play a slightly more favoured centre attacking midfielder role. And up front for today's game, we are going to go with Robin A. So, yes, we're giving the young four starlets 
uh, at the team the start today. Definitely not the, the strongest four kind of attacking players, but they are all very good players in their own right at this level. And they're players who I definitely see as the future of our team here. And I want to kind of give the best pop possible opportunity for them to develop, play regular first team football together and hopefully just gel as a unit. Hopefully we can find some goals today. Of course, we have got some options on the bench. But anyway, Robin A to get the kick off going. And well, three wins in our last four is great. Four wins in our last five would be fantastic. But Auxerre today... They're going to be tricky. Hopefully the youngsters can do well as Quintongo plays it upwards. It's blocked away, but only as far as Pana. Tardio, nice little interplay here behind the centre-backs. Now with Tardio once more. Actas, edge of the box. He's not going to pull the trigger, is he? Quintongo might. That's a save. And, uh, well, that probably should have been a goal. Within the first three minutes, we find ourselves through on goal. A clear-cut chance going our way. And Oxair in the end, defending very, very impressively indeed. To fend off that opportunity... And, uh, well, looking at the stats, so far, it's been, well, I was about to say it's been one-way traffic. Suddenly, the traffic's changed direction. The traffic likes have changed. We are struggling a little for possession here against Auxerre. Um, but, well, let's see how we can get on here. 20 minutes gone. Do I want to make any changes? Set piece to defend. Always a little bit of a nervy moment. It's headed away this time. Quintongo helps it on his way, but, well, it's dealt with, I guess, in the end, just about a bit of a random highlight to be shown then, if we're being completely honest. So 25 minutes gone in this game. It's been a, a little underwhelming so far. Just that one chance within the first five minutes kind of has fallen. And that was the way of Quintongo, the new signing. A chance for him to make a really good first impression for you guys watching. Unfortunately, wasted that opportunity. But, well, maybe we can make something happen here. Botto plays it forward as far as A. He's now going to maybe look for the overlap on the right-hand side. It's going to come for in Vincent. Is anyone in the middle for them? There is a player in the middle. He heads it. And he goes just over the crossbar in the end. Very narrowly indeed. Uh, well, 35 minutes gone here. Oxair definitely finding their feet in this game. And they might find their feet once more as the ball comes forward. Trincal, though, the young Portuguese player. Dispossessed by Actas. That was definitely attacked by the teammate. But Quintongo has the pace. And he has the dribbling capability to see the ball forward. Unfortunately, with crossing like that, we're not going to amount to much. And now we're actually exposed on the counter. A, through on goal. What a save by Prevo, the French magician. In goal, tips it over. And, uh, well, it is now going to be a corner, which is whipped in. Bounces in the penalty area. That's not what you want to see, but that should be a way to safety. Panna, just get the ball out, my friend. No nonsense defending. And, well, so far in this game, Auxerre have been a little bit the better team. Apparently, we've been superior in the air. A keeps getting through on goal. Um... I think we'll stick with this for now. Well, I don't feel like we're playing that badly. I feel like just giving a shouty team talk at halftime could make the difference. Maybe we could go a little bit higher tempo, a little bit more direct in our play. Of course, playing away from home, it's always going to be tricky. I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. Part of me is tempted now actually to switch to counter. Just try and hit them on the break. Just get a little bit of a rest in quickly whilst we can. Go more direct. And, uh, well, see what we can do come the second half. You know, slowing down the play just a little. Give us a chance to catch our breath. I do need to do a shouty team talk. As you can see, everyone fired up. Hopefully, the second half, we can turn things around. Away from home this year in FM, it feels like you need to play on the counter a little bit more than in past years. That home bias seems a little stronger. Uh, I noticed in the Liverpool series, we didn't actually lose at home. But away from home, we were pretty awful. So I'm hoping that, you know, in this kind of away game here, a tricky game against a team competing in the playoff spots, or for the playoff spots, certainly, um, maybe playing on the counter isn't the worst idea here. And, well, we'll see how we get on. Vincent up to A. Ball cleared away to Panna. He now gets the ball forward to Robin A. I mean, this is probably the pointless highlight at the end of the uh, at the start of the half. I don't know why I'm getting too excited about it. Maybe, you know, one day one of these will fly in, but I don't think it's going to be today. Although Auxerre play through A, who's clean for on goal, I mean, he should have scored. He should have. There's no doubt about that. The first clear-cut chance they've had all game came within a minute of the second half resuming and was poor. And, well, we have a chance here. Actas, cross up, headed away. And actually, we could be in trouble here. Auxerre committing a lot of men to the attack. What a ball that is to Yusuf on the opposite flank by them. He's going to be bearing down the byline now. Whips it in. A is there. He nods it down. Was that offside? It wasn't given. And, well, Prevo... Punches the ball into the inside of his own net. Unfortunately, he couldn't get a strong enough hand behind it. And, uh, well, maybe it's time for some tactical changes. Looking at it here, Trincao's not had the greatest of games. I feel like in this kind of game, it's probably worth bringing in Martino uh, to play. 
Uh, I think we'll also take off Robin A and bring in Tuzgar for him, the Tunisian forward. Going to get a little bit of a nod here, changing things up in the final third. A few of the younger players who haven't quite performed today, going to make way for the old guard, the trusted players who hopefully can try and turn things around for us here. And we have got a set piece, Aktas. Whips the ball in, back post, headed away, but only as far as Aktas might be able to pull the ball into the middle here. He does Jabot! And well, the centre-back probably should have doubled his scoring tally for the season there. Boucher in the end with the save. And, uh, well, that was a little underwhelming to say the least, that finish by Gibault. The double change so soon into the second half is a little bit bold, but it might work out here. Tuzgar takes it down, tucks it away. Pendant with the assist, the left-back. Nice little finish in the end. And, well, we bounce back immediately, back up to sixth we go. And uh, well, questionable defending, I think. No pressure on Diallo. Gives it straight to the left back, Pendant. Interesting ball up. Tuzgar just takes it down, takes it round his man, slots it away divinely into that bottom corner. Couldn't have put it any nearer the post. And with that, it's 1 1 with an hour gone. And uh, well, they've had chances in this game, Oxair, but this game, as it's developing, seems to be swinging more towards us, which is what I want to see. Um. On the hour mark here, you know, the temptation to make a sub is real, but we still do have just the one sub left. We still have a lot of football left to play. I don't want to make that ch change too prematurely, so we're going to hold off at least for now. 20 minutes left in this game, and it's been a real ding-dong battle so far, you'd have to say. 15 minutes left now. The possession stat is slightly in Auxerre's favour, but in terms of chances, it's not really been that separable. And we've been probably the better team in the second half in terms of creating opportunities. We have a chance here as well. Panna up to Quintongo, who should have scored. He had another clear-cut chance, the youngster. The young Scott making his live com debut. I feel like the pressure's got to him a little bit here. Triple change coming out now for Auxerre. Fuchs up the line to Tuzgar, who came off the bench and is injured. And, well, Panna is there, and Panna tooks it away. Tuzgar with the assist, a lovely little cross in. And uh, I think we need to take Tuzgar off. He is carrying an injury. I'll bring in Adriat Sima, who, as I mentioned, scored a hat-trick a few games ago. I don't think he's actually played in the first team since that hat-trick. It's a little bit harsh to drop him. But given the team's current kind of conundrum, I am having to rotate the team very heavily. It's something that... Um, has been a little bit of a problem. I knew it was going to be a problem given the fact I wanted to do a rebuild. I wanted to give younger players a lot of first-team football. But, um, yeah, the complaints have come in a little sooner than I expected. And Adriat Seema is one of those men who has made a bit of a fuss. So we'll give him some time here. Ball at the edge of the area. Sisako for Auxerre, maybe looking to get in the ball. Pulls it to the edge of the box. Can we defend here? Last minute, it's a shot. Prevot holds on to it just about. It wasn't entirely convincing by the goalkeeper. And hopefully that is going to be all she wrote here. Ball booted up the line. Unfortunately, neither player able to actually get the ball in the air. But, well, it might not be over. Sane, Fuchs reads the ball. Well, just get it away now. No nonsense to Quitongo. Adriat Sima coming deeper to get the ball. Tries to play it to Actas, but not really going his way. Jibo, though, mops up the mess. And the mess is cleared. It's 2-1. And that's a good little result. That is a really hard-fought, grinded-out away result. Not entirely convincing. Um, you could look at it and say that maybe I shouldn't have played the younger players to start with, but ultimately, three points on the board, a good little result there, and uh, that could be a key game for us. It doesn't actually see us move in the table, but we do start to create a little bit of a gap between ourselves and some of the teams chasing the playoffs, which is good to see. You can see the likes of Brest here, uh, Clement, uh, Nancy as well, and Lorient. Uh, kind of catching up on us, uh, well, not catching up on us, but losing ground on us a little. And hopefully we can capitalise on that. You can see at the top of the table, it's really kind of tight between Avra, uh, Runes, Lons, and, uh, well, ourselves, of course. So anyway, guys, I think that is going to wrap up everything from us today. A little bit of a shorter episode, not so much happening off the pitch. I hope you enjoyed regardless. If you did, of course, leave a like. Uh, for people wondering with regards to the Youth Parallel Series, I've talked about this a little bit, but basically with this series, I plan to run a parallel series where we're managing the youth team. I think I will do episode one of that in January, and episode two will then be the kind of youth regens coming through in March. And the reason for doing it in March is because I'm thinking from then onwards we'll do one episode in March and one episode in September every year. So we'll kind of, you know, alternate every six months there will be an episode. But I feel like doing one in January could be a good point where I've got to grip a little bit with the youth players. We can see some of the players really emerging in the reserves. And, uh, well, from there, uh, hopefully, you know, we can take things forward. But anyway, guys, that is going to be all from me today. Hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, smash the like button. I'll see you guys on the next one. It is me, Jack, and I'm out. I'll talk to you guys in a bit.